George Kilpatrick, Inspiration for the Nation, celebrating people we feel good about. We're pleased to be joined by the Western Region Director of the NAACP for the Western Region, Linda Brown Robinson. Of course, she's also very active in the Syracuse Onondaga County chapter of the NAACP. But uh, Linda well, has been- you are a member. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. And by the way, Linda Brown Robinson has been doing some big things. She has just been appointed to a commission uh, to study reparations. We'll talk about that. But let's talk about last week because you and Mr. Van B. Robinson got to do something pretty special last week or two weeks ago, whenever people might get this, this, this conversation. Linda, what did you get to do? Well, uh, uh, most people don't know. We left here on the 2nd or 3rd of February and, and we motored down to Lorton, Virginia, got on the auto train. You get on, you put your car on and we motored down to uh, Florida, not far from Naples. And we stayed uh, actually just a little bit before we went to um, Melbourne and then we motored down and then we stayed in Florida for several weeks and then we motored all the way back up through every state. So when we got to uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, um, Van said he didn't feel well. Uh, so this is gonna be an FYI and now the whole world will know. Uh, and so we went to urgent care and they did some tests and they couldn't do some more. So um, we then um, went over, they said, let's go to the emergency room. So Van and I head out of urgent care in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I get in and he's not closing the door and I'm saying Van closed the door. So I get out figuring he might've had trouble closing the car door. And when I got in there, I said, Van, close the door. And he didn't say anything. So I touched him and he fell over. Well, as it turned out, Mr. Van was in the hospital ICU uh, for four days and uh, still don't know what it was, but he's okay. Now, we always say God is good, but he was really good on this level. Not only did he get my husband better, but had we not been in Williamsburg, we might have been back to either DC area or Syracuse. And when we got the call and the, the Schumer representative, cause he knew I was traveling. He says, are you all in Syracuse or are you all still in Florida? I said, we're actually in Williamsburg, Virginia. So this is U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer calling because people haven't, His they don't know what you got to do yet. <laughs> oh, okay. His representative uh, that, that is located here in the federal building, uh, Joshua. Okay. And so uh, he lays out this. And at that point, he says, you can't tell a soul. So we told no one. But my cousin kind of knew we were coming. And she's planning this big party. Who she lives in D.C. And I said, so, I said, I gotta tell somebody. All right. My so, cousin's planning a trip. So moving along, he says, Well, this is what's gonna happen. Van is going to be an invited guest by Schumer uh, at the State of the Union, and we're like, <laughs> Wow. And Van said, If I didn't take him, he was gonna walk from Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> Because he said, this is once, and he's right. This is once in a lifetime. There was a 104-year-old woman, Van said he sat near. I think she was 104. She's been waiting all her adult life to be sitting where she was. So wonders never cease. So we got a chance to go to the State of the Union, and it was phenomenal. So, so, what, all right, so now we got to go into detail. So what was it like? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you are not allowed to bring devices in. Right. Uh, and so Van had to turn his all over. And uh, when I went into the chambers, I had to turn mine over. But most of the time we sat uh, in Schumer's one of two offices. He has two. And I read the speech and I went, hmm, this is the president's speech. When we heard him deliver it, he brought it. Yeah. He, he brought it because what it read and what you heard were two different presentations. Two different things. Did you go into the chamber? Yes, we did. Wow. Yeah. I, I have my pass and uh, they collected most things back because mm -hmm. they just don't want them floating around in the universe. 
Uh, but I did get pictures of them. And Van, I get this picture, I get this text, and it's a picture of Van and a person. So, and it was, it turns out to be Kathy Hochul, the picture. And I said, texting, who's this? And the person writes back, Linda, it's Kathy Hochul. <laughs> <laughs> And I went, oh, okay. So she was sitting right behind Van. They had some uh, people from um, all over the country. Uh, it, it was just, George, without going into a lot of detail, it was the most phenomenal thing you ever want to see. And Van had said to me the night before, he says, you know, I just came out of the hospital. I hope I don't fall asleep. So Van, you fall asleep? He said, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> So when you when you're there, Linda, with all the theatrics and the up and the down, what was that? Are you doing that too? Like with the Democrat? I mean, not to say that you have to be Democrat or Republican, but like, do people who are just guests are they standing and sitting with the Republicans and Democrats? No, they're in the gallery. It's George. It's actually on the second level, mm -hmm. and the elected officials are not on that level. They are right actually on the floor the gallery which is upstairs right, right, right. on the second level so uh, those are invi invited guests um uh they had a gentleman that uh is part of the war um and uh he had his leg and so an american doctor took care of his wounds while he was fighting the war so uh it's it's an array of people everyone gets to invite someone so uh, every representative uh on both sides of the aisle and both houses get a chance to invite, I believe one person, correct? They can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe mm -hmm. it's one person. Uh, Representative Schumer, because of his stature and his position, I believe he got to invite six and there may be somebody else on the other side of the so, aisle that gets to. So think about it, in the United States of America, on the date of the uh, State of the Union, you were one of only a handful of people in the in a country of what three hundred million that were in that chambers that night. Right, you Van got to be there, George. So there's no mistake. Van, yes, because we invited guests, and I was a hanger on her. Oh, right, 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 right. You, so was it plus one? No, you cannot. The only person I believe um, that was allowed to was the soldier from the war that could not speak any English. He speaks his uh, native tongue. So he got a chance to have somebody because he can't um, he can't understand English. So they had to have an interpreter. So did you go in the- uh, I you... did, but I was not where Van was. Oh, I... Van was in a special area. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. but you got to go in as a guest of his somewhere else. Briefly, we got uh, our own our own credentials, and we got to go in briefly, not to stay for the entire thing, and then we had to exit. Okay, just just, just so Van is Van is so Linda. Um, you've yes, been sir. New York State is studying the idea, studying reparations, and other mm -hmm. communities have have done some things. Uh, I mean, I believe it was in California that California. they're looking at this, uh, and other places. What? Tell me about your appointment by Kathy Hochul to the New York. What's the commission called? Um, it's it's the uh, commission uh, to study reparations for New York State. So New York State com commu uh, commission on reparations and remedies. Uh, but I was surprised because while we were traveling, um, I did get a call and I'm not sure because we've been gone a while, but I want to say I got a call from uh, our one of our local reps, uh, Colleen Deacon, uh, talking to me about it. And then I heard no more about it. And then I had heard from friends in other areas, they were also approached. So I said, oh, they're going to have a big commission and I'll get to know people. Well, I guess when it really came down to it, George, um, most everybody, as I look over the list, there's only two of us from upstate New York, a, a, mm. a woman from Rochester and myself. And um, I know President Hazel Dukes um, had said quite some time ago on another call that New York doesn't kind of stop, you know, 
at, at Bound State. At the Tappan Zee, at the Cuomo at Bridge. That, <laughs> exactly. And so there are two of us representing the upsta upstate area. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm hoping to do good. I don't have all the answers. I know right. I don't have all the answers, but my hope is I've got 11 region, 11 branches in my region. Um, I'm going to tap them and anybody else who wants to weigh in on what they feel is fair and just. Uh, why do you, why, why did you accept this um, appointment? George, I believe, and we may not get everything we want. We may get nothing we want, but it's long overdue. We can at least have the discussion how far it goes. I don't know. You don't know. None of us know, even the commission. But it's long overdue, and at least we can have a discussion on this and a healthy discussion because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions in the room. And so I think the discussion comes and then some solutions and then some hardcore yeses, we can do this. No, we can't do this. So it's long overdue. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can do the commission, this commission can do uh, the state of New York. Uh, people of color, African-Americans, black people, if you will, you know, give them some, if we all can't get it, maybe some of us can get it. So the official long title establishes the New York State Community Commission on Reparations, Remedies, and acknowledges the fundamental injustice and humanity of slavery, signed by Governor Hochul. And in her uh, acknowledgement, she says, the commission acknowledges the horrific injustice of slavery and will be tasked with examining the legacy of slavery, subsequent discrimination against people of African descent, and the impact these forces continue to have in the present day. Linda, you've been on the front lines with the NAACP for, give me the number of years. Um, probably since 1971 when Van and I arrived here in 68. And uh, when we got to know the community, probably four or five years later, we so, said, you know, we need some stuff. And Will Morgan, who's just recently been deceased, and uh, Emma Johnston and a whole bunch of us got together and said, let's get an NAACP branch here. Because there had been one, and it was then defunct. And we were the successful group of people, because there were other factions that wanted it. and. We just ran with it. So we've been involved in one way or another since since 1971-ish. 53 years. Is that, how, is that 53? <laughs> I, I was doing the math for my... <laughs> wow. I've been doing the math. And I, I do believe, Linda, that uh, I think this is, wouldn't you call this continuing part of that legacy? Like like you said, you what's your hope that Ha happens out here that, that what, what's your hope that hap what is your hope that this commission does for the communities that have been impacted generationally well some of us that that needed to be repaid or given back are no longer here people like me will probably not be able to take advantage of it but those coming behind me, uh, those coming behind you, uh, I, I believe, I, and, and we, can, we can't put a, a dollar amount on it. That's my belief. There's no mm -hmm. dollar amount that we're going to be able to put because the world would be defunct. The state would be defunct. The country would be defunct. But if we can give perhaps one segment of individuals, just you know, a tiny slice of the pie, and to give back to what their ancestors struggled for, fought for, died for, uh, maimed for, then we can do that. That's my hope, hope that we can give somebody some slice of the pie, some monies back. How long do you, will this, do you know how long the commission is tasked? There will be a written report. Yes, I was told it is a year. We have not met for the first time. But I think, George, let me just say it's important to add to this, that this is the main commission. Apparently there are, and I have not been officially told, I was told by someone that a member of their community also was put on a byproduct, if you will, committee 
uh, and they may be able to flesh out a few things and then they will pass it on to us. I, I honestly don't know. Um, the announcement was public before most of us, any of us were actually told because Kathy Hochul had some appointments, Carl Hasty has some appoint had a po few appointments and Andrea Stewart Cousins had a few appointments. So mm. there are three individuals, three groups, if you will, that were were given uh, the right to appoint some people. So I don't know, but I've been told it's only a year. Looking at where the NAACP and you have a whole region, uh, is it 11 branches? I think we talked about it last time. You got mm -hmm. 11 branches. What's happening uh, upstate New York in the Western region right now, Linda? Uh, what's the consensus of what you're hearing from branches around where we are with racial equity. Can you give us a sort of a report card, so to speak? I can't share a lot, but what I can tell you that I'm hearing is that in some of the branches across this region, and I would imagine maybe across the state, we're still hearing that people are still fighting for things that we thought we had and maybe we are taking it for granted, but we shouldn't be fighting for things in 2024 that we were fighting for in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Like what, Linda? Well, I, as I said, I, if I share some of them, then I would have to share oh, totally. Okay. But we are still talking about hardcore discrimination. Mm. We're talking about people who don't want people on school boards, don't want people as elected officials, and this is 2024. Um, grains don't have anything to do with color. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you're dumb, you're dumb. If you're right. smart, you're smart. And that has nothing to do with the color of your skin and the background of where you came from and where your ancestors came from. So why in 2024 are we still fighting for things that my mother, my grandmother, your mother, your grandmother fought for? Uh, it, it's, it's just not right. And so these are the kind of things that I think will come into play for, from this reparations committee. You know, you, you're a volunteer and the NAACP is a volunteer organization. And yet you've been involved, you know, most of your life. Why? Well, you know, George, and I think you've known me long enough to know that when I had a business, um, and it was an event planning business, and people kept telling me, you're giving away your, your resources. You're giving away things that you should be charging people for. And after about nine and a half years, I realized I, I really didn't want to own a business. I really just wanted to work on behalf of the people. And I think Van is the same way. We, you know, we used to campaign, do political campaigns for a friend of ours who's, ours, who's now deceased in Rochester. Van and I would leave work at four or five o'clock in the afternoon, drive to Rochester and campaign. One or two o'clock in the morning, we would be coming back on the throughway and getting up, going to sleep, getting up the next morning and going to our so-called nine to five. And so for us, I think, and, and I'm not speaking for Van, but I'm speaking for Van, that both of us feel like it's important. If you don't speak up and speak out, then you don't have anything to complain about. Don't say, I, I, I'm mad because this person's in office and I'm mad because this CEO got this job and how come it didn't come to us if you're not out speaking on behalf of the community or at least trying to, to speak on behalf of the community. So I guess that's why I do. And I believe Van, if I can speak for him, that's why he does it. That's why he's still doing it at his age. Yeah, and, and, and we really appreciate Van uh, for all the work that he's done and looked at he's been able to see 81 he was one of the first people in this community to talk about tearing down anyone and remember when he first said it everybody everybody poo pooed and laughed and said do you remember linda speak to it because you were there i i was when he first mentioned it and it happened in 1968 when we first arrived here he, as he tells the story he, he got here before I did. I think he got here in July. I didn't get here till December. He said he made a wrong turn 
um, coming from the airport because he got a rental car. And he turned around and got mixed up. And he says, and he looked on one side of the highway and he looked on the other side of the highway. And he said, something's wrong with this picture. It looks like the haves are over here and the have nots are over here. And he said, there's something wrong. And he says, and then as he began to get into his job, his real job that, that, that fed us, he started going around and driving around and seeing. And he says, and of course, at that point, the structure, the 81 structure wasn't in the shape it's in now. Right. And he said, nah, this can't be. And, and, and he tells the story probably a, 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 with a little bit more oomph to it, but he said, can't do this. And that was when, and when he told me what his plan was, I looked at him and said, you're nuts. <laughs> that highway is never coming down because this is the way it is. And they don't build highways to tear highways down. And this has been, Van right now has a sledgehammer so he can take the first hit. Mm. He has a hammer, a, a sledgehammer that he went out and bought and he came home with it one day and I went, what's that? He says, this is for 81. <laughs> well, well, Van and Linda, uh, Van is not here tonight today, but we repeat both of you who are doing the work in this community. Um, and um, you got to you gotta give us some of your travel advice because y'all been around the world. And <laughs> that's another thing that people that know, people that know you know that you travel a lot. But what a blessing it is to have you on this reparations commission. Do us right, Linda. I know you will. Representing upstate New York, go ahead, you gonna say? I will do my best, but I, I'm gonna tell, I don't mind asking for help. Right. Linda's not the, the biggest star in the room. She doesn't want to be the biggest star in the room. So I am looking for the community to give me feedback on what needs to be done to pay us back. Is it possible? It may be impossible but give me suggestions because I don't have all the answers. So if you have suggestions, your sororities in the community, your fraternity, throw them my way. I'm more than happy to bring them to the table. How, how do people get, the, get that to you, Linda? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you my email address. <laughs> See, I don't even know my email address. Uh, George, can we add this later? The email address. All right, I'll I'll have it by by the time. George, they, the email I sent it to you. Um, that Syracuse, you sent to. NAACP. No, I keep saying Syracuse. No, you can send it to my regional director. It's oh NAACP. Uh huh. Western Region Director at AOL.com. So it's NAACP. Western, W-E-S-T-E-R-N, region, director at AOL.com. Linda Brown Robinson is the Western Region Director for the NAACP in New York. Linda, thank you for spending some time with us today. Thank you, George, for having me. Inspiration for the Nation. <laughs> <laughs>